Hey all your sons, this is Pradesh Chaudhary Quantum Group. In this video, I will take up another challenging problem of rigid body dynamics from IPHO 2014. So, here is this question. The question states, a small puck of mass M is carefully placed onto the inner surface of the thin hollow thin cylinder of mass M. So, this is a puck and this is a thin hollow cylinder. A cross-sectional view is shown. The mass of the hollow cylinder is M and radius is R. Initially, the cylinder rests on the horizontal plane and the puck is located at a height h above the plane as shown in the figure on the left. Find the interaction force between the puck and the cylinder at the moment when the puck passes the lowest point of the trajectory. Assume the friction between the puck and the inner surface of the cylinder is absent and the cylinder moves on, a, on the plane without slipping. The free fall acceleration is g. So, uh, everything is explained in this question. We have to find the force of interaction between puck and the cylinder when the puck reaches to the lowest point. There is no friction between puck and the cylinder. So, the force of interaction is only the normal reaction. So, basically, we have to find the normal reaction between the puck and the cylinder when the puck reaches to the lowest point. So, let's go to the next page. So, that is the thing shown. Uh, we should know one thing that there is no friction between the puck and the cylinder but surface has to be rough it is not given whether the surface is rough or not rough but because it is written that the cylinder rolls without slipping so it has to be uh, there has to be friction and a static friction will work so we release this whole system from rest both puck and the cylinder were at rest and now the puck starts sliding over the inner surface of the cylinder and the cylinder moves central mass translates in the horizontal direction and uh, it rolls without slipping so there will come some angular velocity also the cylinder rolls without slipping and puck goes down so now uh, that is the situation when the puck reaches the lowest point of the cylinder so suppose the velocity of the puck at that moment is v1 obviously it has to be in the horizontal direction and the velocity of the center of mass of the cylinder will always be in the horizontal direction and let's assume at that moment it is v2 and the angular velocity of the cylinder is omega because it is rolling on a uh, <coughs> fixed surface ground so this v2 r and omega must be related by a constant v2 is equal to r omega so we have to find the normal reaction basically the force of interaction between the puck and the cylinder at this moment so uh, let me see the picture in the frame of center mass of the hollow cylinder before going further let's see so at this moment what are the forces acting on this cylinder uh, let's see this force without friction first so the forces would be the mg normal and the normal from the ground and the normal from the puck so without friction the other forces the two normal one normal from the ground and one normal from the puck and its weight are all in the vertical direction so without friction the center mass has no acceleration without friction the center mass without friction there will not be any torque about center mass because the line of action of the all forces are going through the center mass so without friction the center mass acceleration is zero without friction alpha is zero so without friction a is equal to r alpha is balanced matched so there is no need of friction so at this moment when this puck reaches the lowest point there will not be any friction uh, acting on the cylinder only force would be the weight and the normal so at that moment the acceleration of the center mass would be zero so if i want to see the picture of this puck from the center mass of the hollow cylinder so first of all that at that moment center mass of the cylinder has no acceleration so that is our inertial frame if it had some acceleration at some other moment in between here to here the center mass would have some acceleration so i would have to take the uh, 
pseudo force also. So, luckily at this moment, the center mass has no acceleration. So, there will not be any pseudo force. So, with respect to center mass of the cylinder, the velocity of the puck at this moment would be V1 plus V2 in the right direction like this. So, drawing FBD of this puck at the moment. So, uh, this is mg and this is normal. So, obviously in the frame of the center of mass of the hollow cylinder, the puck is moving uh, along the circle of radius r. So, the forces are shown and mg and the velocity v1 plus v2 moving the circle of radius r. So, applying the motion over the circular equation for this puck, we can simply write n minus mg is equal to m v1 plus v2 whole square by r. So, that is this equation. So, simplifying that, so we will get n is equal to mg plus m v1 plus v2 whole square by r. So, basically the task is to find v1 and v2 and put into the equation 1 to get that term. And now from where I can get v1 plus v2, basically v1 and v2. So, uh, we can see that if we see the whole system of this small m plus capital M. What are the forces? The outside forces, the normal reaction between them would be internal. Weight uh, <coughs> is obviously conservative. The normal from the ground uh, doesn't do any work. So, there will be some friction between this uh, hollow cylinder and the ground. But we know that the work done by static friction and rolling without slipping uh, on fixed platform is zero because the friction is acting at the lowest point and the velocity of the lowest point is always zero. So, friction does not do any work in the pure rolling on fixed platform. So, uh, the non-conservative force friction does not do any work. So, we can say that the total mechanical energy of cylinder and the spark will remain constant. So, writing the conservation of mechanical energy for the puck plus hollow cylinder from this moment to this moment. So, we will write conservation of mechanical energy. Gain in kinetic energy is equal to loss in potential energy. So, as the this goes from here to here, this uh, puck gains a kinetic energy half m v1 square. And if I have to write the kinetic energy of the hollow cylinder, that would be half m v c m square plus half i c m omega square. ICM would be MR square, omega is V by R. So, simplifying the total kinetic energy of this hollow cylinder, adding the translation and rotational path would be just MV square. So, kinetic energy of uh, this hollow cylinder at this moment is M capital M V2 square. I assume that the velocity of center mass of the hollow cylinder is V2 and the only loss in kinetic potential energy is of is that of the puck and that is simply small mgr. So, that is my equation 2. So, we got one equation uh, to <clears throat> in v1 and v2. I need one more equation so that I can solve v1 and v2 and then put back into equation 1 to get n. Oh, now, see how I can get another equation. So, that was the situation. That was the initial moment. This is the final moment. Let us see in between a general moment when puck is somewhere uh, this position, somewhere between this position and the lowest position. So, that is suppose here, puck is somewhere here and the angular position of the puck from the this downward vertical line is a theta. Forces on the puck at this moment are a normal reaction and the weight. There is no friction between the puck and the hollow cylinder. So, only forces are normal reaction and the weight. Uh, assume that the acceleration of this puck is A1x along horizontal along x direction. So, writing the equation of motion for this puck along the x direction, F resultant along x is equal to m into uh, acceleration along x. So, uh, the net force along x direction because uh, this component of n, this is theta, so that would be uh, 90 minus theta. So, component along this horizontal direction would be n sin theta. So, I can write n sin theta is equal to 
small m a1 x. So that is the uh, equation of motion for this puck along the horizontal direction. And now let me draw the FBD of this hollow cylinder. So what are the forces? The one force will be a reaction of this end, its weight and the normal from the ground. And there will all obviously be a friction. I have not shown friction yet. So this N and Mg will not give any uh, acceleration nor they will give any alpha because their line of action is passing through central mass. The horizontal component of this N will give a acceleration in this horizontal direction towards left. It is rolling without slipping. So if there is some acceleration towards left, so there should be a anti-clockwise angular acceleration. And out of these forces, normal mg and this and this is another normal from the ground. So all these three force line of action passes to the central mass, so they cannot provide any angular acceleration. Uh, I told you because the central mass has an acceleration towards left, so to match that acceleration in pure rolling, there should be an angular acceleration. And this angular acceleration must come from some other force, and that other force is friction because the requirement is angular acceleration along this direction, uh, anti clockwise direction, so we need to have a friction in the towards right like that. So suppose there is a friction acting, static friction Fs. And now because of all these forces, uh, let the acceleration of the central mass of the <coughs> this hollow cylinder is say A. And its angular acceleration is alpha. So obviously in pure rolling, A is equal to R alpha. So now let me write the translational motion for the central mass of this hollow cylinder. Net force along x direction is this the component of this n along x direction that would be n sin theta and there is a fs in the opposite direction. So net force in the direction of acceleration is n sin theta minus fs. So equation would be n sin theta minus fs is equal to capital M into A. n sin theta this component would be n sin theta that is fs. So n sin theta minus fs is equal to M into A. And write the equation of torque about the central mass. Torque about central mass is equal to I about central mass into alpha. So torque is coming from friction. So torque is uh, Fs into R radius is equal to I, that is MR square into alpha. Fs into R, MR square into alpha, 1R will get cancelled. So that will be Fs is equal to M into R alpha, R alpha is A. So Fs is equal to MA. So from here you can see uh, just send this fs into that side so n sin theta would be uh, fs plus ma fs is ma so n sin theta is twice f ma and uh, from 3 and 6 n sin theta is equal to m a 1 x and here n sin theta is capital m capital m into a uh, twice of that so m a 1 x is equal to twice m a. That is seventh equation. Now let us go to next page. So we got that thing small m a 1 x is equal to 2 m a. Now this a 1 x is the x component of the acceleration of the puck. So that is obviously the rate of change of the velocity along x direction d v 1 x by d t. And similarly the acceleration of the central mass. Uh, would be the dv2 by dt. Obviously, the acceleration of the central mass is always in the horizontal direction for the hollow cylinder. Now, this dt dt will get cancelled. So, we will have m dv1x is equal to 2m uh, dv2. Integrate this both sides. Now, see at the initial moment, we had this picture. Uh, initially, it does not have any velocities, so obviously its x component was 0 velocities and the central mass was also at rest. And here the x component of the velocity of this puck has become v1 and the velocity of the central mass of the hollow cylinder has become v2. So my limit would become uh, 0 to v1 and here 0 to v2. So just putting the limit, we'll get small m v1 is equal to 2 capital M v2. So there is a one more equation that I've got. So now got 
I've got two equation v1 and v2. I can solve them and can put into the first equation to get n. So the another equation uh, in v1 and v2 we adopted half m v1 square plus capital M v2 square is equal to mgr. So from here, uh, what I can get do, I can uh, put the value of v1 here, 2 capital M v2 by small m in this equation. So I will get m by 2. This is in place of v1. I am putting 2 capital M v2 by small m, that whole square, plus m v2 square plus mgr. So I will take m outside and uh, v2 outside. So there will be uh, m v2 square. So from these two, if I take m v2 square common, so I'll get this equation. So if I take m v2 square, this is 2 square, 4 by 2 is 2. So from this part, I'll get uh, twice capital M by small m. And from this part, I'll get 1, and that is mgr. So v2 square will be uh, mgr divided by capital M. And that 2 capital M by small m plus 1. And that thing would be 2 capital M plus small m by m. Take this m in the numerator. So that would be m square gr divided by capital M plus 2 capital M into m. From here, take m capital M outside. So m square by capital M square gr divided by 2 plus small m by capital M. Take the square root. Or let it be like that. So that is my equation 9 and uh, now I can get uh, v1. So from here v1 is equal to 2 capital M v2 by small m. So v1 square is 4 m square v2 square by small m square. So v1 square is 4 capital M square v2 square by small m square. Put the value of v2 from here. v2 square from here so that m square small m square this will get cancelled. So we will get. 4gr divided by 2 plus small m by capital M. Let's go to the next page. That's question 10. So uh, we had obtained v1 square was this. So if I take a square root, so v1 will become small m by capital M square root of gr divided by 2 plus small m by capital M. And v2 square I had obtained this. So v2 is equal to 2 into square root of gr upon 2 plus small m by capital M. So v1 plus v2. So in v1 and v2 this part is common. So if I take this common, so from here 2 and from here small m by capital M. So I will get this. And the further simplifying, this is uh, outside is 2 plus small m by capital M. And here inside the square root also one term is 2 plus small m by capital M. So that would be square root of gr into 2 plus small m by capital M. So if I square this, so I will get because in the <coughs> expression of n there was v1 plus v2 whole square. So if I will square it, I will get uh, gr into 2 plus small m by capital M. And that is my 11th equation. And now finally, the last step. So from equation 1, that was the first equation, small n is equal to mg plus m v1 plus v2 whole square by r. So put the value of this uh, v1 plus v2 whole square from equation 11 to this equation. So we'll get uh, this was equation 11. So putting this, we'll get small mg m by r v1 plus v2 whole square is gr 2 plus small m by capital M. And this r and r will get cancelled. There is mg, there is mg. So take small mg common and uh, that will be 1 plus 2 plus m by small m. That is a 3 plus small m by capital M. And that is my answer. So I can further simplify. I can write 3 outside. So that will become 3 mg uh, into 1 plus small m by 3 capital M. So finally, I have got the uh, force of interaction between puck and the hollow cylinder when the puck reaches the rose